Hi guys and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we will create uh, this screwdriver here and for that we will jump right into it. We will create a new project. You should already be able to do that. Um, I'll save it somewhere here. And name it screwdriver. Accept. And when I have my project here, then be sure that you copy your images you got from me here into the source image folder and then I will switch to my four-sided view and in the side view I go to view image plane import image and I take this one and I just reposition it so that I have my area somewhere in the middle and uh, I'll go also to the front view and I import here actually the back side could also do the front but it's easier for me to start here with that I can change this afterwards and I also go to my top view and import the top one and now I check in my uh, side view or in my perspective view how the images fit together. I have to scale them differently uh, that means I just pushed one out of my way and I scale my back side a little bit so be sure that you try to match it somewhere here on the top also and the bottom it won't be perfect on both sides try to get it here in the middle and so when I check here and also down here it always depends where you move it but should be around like this okay and also the top view I have to rotate it in 90 degrees and you can check it out here in the channel box not 90, 180 of course and I also push it down and scale it right away that I have the feeling that it has nearly the same push it here to the middle and try to find good way scale it a little bit too much so I'm just trying to oops still way too small because I don't have the photo always check in the back also so try to be as accurate as possible of course it won't be perfect and the main image I will work from is my side view but be careful that you do position your images somewhere like that and then I push the images when I'm ready oops push them out of the way 
so that they don't disturb my working process. Okay, that's the first thing I do. Then I save my scene and when you um, created a new project, it will go automatically to the scenes folder. So be sure that you uh, work in a appropriate project. So screwdriver one. Save us. And we will start actually here with the top part. And for that, I take a cylinder. I subdivide it in maybe 10 or 12. Let me see, just rotate it 90 degree. And actually 12 uh, is maybe the best um, way to start because I have a middle line. Yeah. Because with 10, I will mirror later on uh, the whole project, uh, the, the whole screwdriver. And when I take 12 from the beginning, not more. Eight might be a little bit too less. Yeah. Now let's stay 12. Okay. Then I push my image to the other side. It was the wrong one. So now I see my object. I roughly scale it and I also give them maybe four subdivisions in the height. Okay. I also push my top image here at the bottom so that I can see my shape here also from the top side. And now we will follow up the process of moving and rotating my edge loops and be sure when you do the scaling don't scale it here in this so where you get an, an egg shape here be always aware that when you do a scaling or moving stuff no scaling scaling always here in the perspective with the middle um, my middle cube and I rotate it here then I take that one and let's see yeah don't need to scale it maybe I need to scale this up I could also do my shading x-ray so that I see better through the object and now here in the back I try actually to rotate this because I have to create this um, shape here and it's easier when I start rotating here And I will here in the back part I could also scale just in this direction, try to reposition it. So actually you see this, this line going down here. We will try to follow this and also come back here. So I scale it and rotate it. So this might be a little bit tricky in the first place. I check here if it is too, yeah, we're getting a little bit smaller here in the back. And I also take this edge loop again and also rotate it a little bit so that we 
just getting more and more rotated with our edge loops. Always check in all views, okay, does it uh, match the image? And don't go back too far away from the form. Or the, from the round shape, I mean. That's the reason why I always rotate here in the perspective to see if everything's still fine. Okay. So, not too bad. Maybe I scale this up a little bit more. Move it. Then I take here the faces. In the front. Mm. Be sure that's still perfectly round here. I just do some extrudes. You can also do it with uh, the edge loops. So I extrude it one time in this direction, then do another extrude. Let's scale it. Do another extrude. Scale it. And another one. Maybe this could have been a little bit smaller, but I'll fix it later. Just the last time and another extrude. Then pushing it inside so that we have a place for I don't know what's the word for it. Maybe it's the same in English. So now that's our basic shape. So then we will continue here with that part. Actually, you can start with a new cylinder, but I think it will be easier for you when we extrude this out, this form out of this one. Okay? Because um, the topology will stay better. So I take all the faces, then I extrude it one time and I immediately check here in my views how big it should be. Now I scale it actually a little bit I don't push it too far, and somewhere here, and also scale it a little bit. Then, oh, and I also rotate it. We will do a little bit more rotation here in the next steps. Now another extrude, push it down and I take this type of scaling that I rotated in the same way, check here in my views if uh, maybe I have to get bigger here, I scaled this one too, too hard. Actually, I need to be that thick and in this direction. So you see, I don't move uh, single vertices. I always take the whole round shape and scale it. So it's easier for me that the form stays nicely 
curve shaped and um, I don't want to destroy here my form. And here at this position I think I have to get a little bit thicker and also with that one. Okay, you see here, this is getting much better. And you see my shape is not too bad. Then I go on with furthermore extrusions. When you don't want to click every single face, uh, there is also a nice tool here called Paint Selection Tool. And when you press B on the keyboard, you can scale or shrink your um, area and then I just paint around here and everything is selected. Okay, it might help you some, somewhere, somehow. Then do another extrude, push it here and check how my view is doing. And I still do more rotation so that I you can get actually really straight here. Maybe a little bit of scaling and moving. Then go on with the extrudes. Just push a little bit further then Scale it up a little bit. I have to adjust my image so that it's has the same form both sides. Also here a little bit of scaling. Then another extrusion. Always scale the whole ring. Oops, just the one wrong direction. Check the scaling and moving. And another one. Scale the whole thing. And just another one. And so I get quite fast and easy the whole shape, the first rough shape of my screwdriver. Of course we have to do a little bit more adjustments and when I'm happy with that I will insert this nice um, decorative lines. But the before I do this I will uh, um, adjust my form a little bit better so that it is sharper here in this area and here it, it's a little bit too um, too small and be sure that you of course, when it's just a little bit here in this area, you can take the single faces and move it, but just a little bit. Otherwise, we, you will destroy the, um, the nice form. So maybe some sometimes it's better when you do um, the whole edge loop. And for the... Um, you see here in the back it is a little bit sharper and then it get, gets less sharp and what I do for that I just take uh, this edge loop and rotate it actually in a little bit in this direction push it up so that it is more narrow to each other here and it goes further um, away here so move it a little bit more 
and of course I have to scale it up also a little bit. And the effect of this, maybe, well, let's see if it's getting better. You see it's getting a little bit more sharp here, and but it smooth this out here, okay? And that's the easiest way actually. Of course I can insert another edge loop so that it's get, it gets a little um, more edgy here. But I leave it here uh, in in this part. Depends on how do you want to have it. So for going a little bit more into detail, um, of course, when we have a look here in the front, I need a lot more edge loops, and I think I have to rotate the whole thing a little bit because it looks a little bit strange. Mm, no, it's not too bad, but I have to adjust a little bit. Just here. So when you scale, always check that you are in the perspective and you take the middle and I have to insert more edge loops because I won't get happy so oops I have a lot of subdivisions in here so um, I have to go into the options and make sure that it, I don't have um, I have relative distance from edge here turned on and so I do an edge loop here and everywhere where I want to have a sharper edge so one here one here one here yeah much better and I think I will also do another one here so that this gets a little bit more of a definition. Yeah, much better. And when I have a look here on this side, yeah, you see this star form. And that's the reason why you have this because everything is going to one point and I would just recommend to do a little extrude here on this point to create another edge loop here and you can't insert an edge loop actually with the insert edge loop tool because everything is going to one point so you have to use this little extrude trick to get an edge loop um, so take all of your faces and do an extrude and I just switch into the scale mode and then I extrude one um, little circle here and I push it down a little bit so when you now have a look at it it's rounder but you have this little peak here but actually uh, we have to model this little holder afterwards so the geometry will change later on anyway so we just leave it here at um, this place and I'm quite happy with the basic form.